Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another pen from uh, Chris at Butterknife Creations. This is a, a custom made pen. And this pen was sent to me by Derek at StonecotFineWritingSupplies.com in the UK. So I'd like to thank Derek for loaning me this pen for review and getting the chance to review this pen. So this pen uh, doesn't come in a box, but it does come in this lovely leather pen sleeve. And it, as you can see here, it is stained with ink and it's then coated. So uh, it does actually look quite nice and this can be reused a lot. So I am liking the way that, that Chris um, provides the pens in this manner. If you take a look here, you can see the pen just peeking out. So if I remove the pen, you'll see this pen here. And this is a really nice uh, Nico Ebonite pen. Uh, it's a, a brown swirl or brown whipple uh, material. Uh, it's an Ebonite material that, that Chris has uh, made uh, from, uh, or made a pen from. Uh, it's a really, really beautiful material. Um, it is Ebonite or hard or vulcanized rubber. It's not acrylic. Uh, it doesn't have that smell, but what I will say is, because Chris provides these pen sleeves, all of his pens smell of leather and not smell of acrylic or ebonite, which, which is actually, for me, a really nice touch because uh, I do like the smell of leather. So I think let's take a look at this pen. You have this rounded sort of conical uh, end cap here to the cap and the other side of the end cap here which would be where the piston filling knob would be if it was a piston filling pen uh, again is rounded off slightly here you have this really beautiful uh, red ripple or brown ripple i'd say it's probably more of a, a reddish brown uh, material here it, it really is quite nice in terms of the uh, shape here the cap tapers in slightly to the cap finial here tapers out to around about here on the cap tapers in it's not a seamless join between the cap and the body but you'll see that the body also tapers in here then starts to taper out to this point and then uh, tapers back into what would be the end cap now if I unscrew the cap here uh, you'll see that he's actually put a uh, black uh, plated or coloured nib on here. It is a number six size Bok nib. It's a medium nib with an ABS plastic feed. Uh, but I think that actually makes it a nice touch here with that brown pen. Um, if I unscrew the body, you'll see a standard Smith uh, International converter here. Uh, and uh, this is just a uh, pull-off uh, converter. It's not a screw-in converter, but uh, it's a very tight fit, so that I like as well. Uh, you'll see here that the section itself actually uh, has a concaveness here, so that that stops your fingers slipping off onto the nib as well. Uh, there is, uh, you'll see the threads here, and you'll see a slight step up, but uh, you don't feel these threads when you have your fingers on them. And to be honest, this section is quite long, so you don't really need to be touching those threads at all. Um, the body here is a little bit more bulbous around here, which I find actually sits nicely in the crook of my hand. Uh, you cannot, unfortunately, post these caps if you are a cap poster. Actually, this one, you, you probably could get away with it. Most of the chameleons, the bumpy chameleons, you cannot. This one actually has been rounded off a little bit more thinner here. So you probably could get away with posting it, but that is a really long pen and you don't need to post that cap either. Uh, and honestly, if, if I, um, because it's a clipless pen, uh, if I wanted uh, to put it on my desk, because obviously it is going to roll, uh, I normally have a rickshaw bag. This is a Goulet uh, pen sleeve here and I will just put that there and it will just not roll around the desk. So... If, if you are that way inclined and you do prefer clips to to basically have a roll stop, then you you could do that or have a, um, 
uh, maybe a, a pen pillow or something just to um, put it uh, on the desk with. Uh, but for me, I, I love this material. This is a really lovely uh, ripple effect there. It's sort of the wood grain effect that's going on in that material. And you can see uh, the ebonite here is also polished quite highly as well. Uh, so uh, you do get a nice shine. You can see that from my studio lights. Now, I think what we'll do, and <laughs> I'm going to try and stop it rolling. It is going to roll. Um, I'm going to uh, do a length check. So let me hold this here. Let's see if I can hold it. We have about 147 millimeters in length. The length of the cap, we're looking about 65, 66 millimeters in length. And if I look at the length of the body to the tip of the nib, we're looking about 138 millimeters in length. So that is quite a long pen. So you really shouldn't need to post that cap, uh, but you can just about do it on this model. Uh, if if you are a cap poster and you want to get a, a pen, then I would certainly check with Derek uh, if you're buying it through Derek or uh, check with Chris at Butter Knife Creations to see if that cap will post because I have got a couple of other uh, Butter Knife Creation acrylic pens which do not post. So I would just double check that um, with them if you're buying it. But the Ebonite here does seem to post. So uh, let me check the weight of the pen. We are looking at Ebonite. It's just over 28 and a half grams in weight. The weight of the cap, we're looking at just over 10 grams in weight. And then the weight of the body, we are looking at just under 17 grams in weight. So I, I find anything around the 15 to 20 grams in weight a, a really, really nice weight. Uh, I just want to show you the lovely pattern here though in this uh, ripple ebonite this red ripple it really is a beautiful beautiful material uh, i've always actually liked the waterman red ripples and uh, although they they are either in, in a lot of cases quite faded or if if they're to this quality they they tend to be very expensive uh, I wouldn't mind a red ripple, but in a custom pen like this from maybe Chris at Butter Knife Creations, because this this is a, a really nice uh, design, and I do like that material. So I might have to look at maybe picking one of these up at some point in in Ebonite, because uh, that that does actually look quite nice to me. So I think with that, let's do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have a London Pen Company, and uh, this is a Christopher in Caramel Aranoid. We have a London Pen Company, Christopher 15, and this is in Primary Manipulation 1. We have an Atelier Luso Carina in Black Ice Alumilite. We have an Atelier Luso Carina in Diamond Nebula. We have a Pelican M800, and this is Grand Class. We have a Butterknife Creations, and pen this is a bumpy chameleon in the red ripple we have an edison pen company a collier in antique marble we have a john twist volcano we have an atelier luso andromeda in the king cobra and an atelier luso andromeda in the dragon so i think let's go and do a writing sample so this is the butter knife uh, creations and it is uh, a bumpy chameleon and I do love these bumpy chameleons now the nib in here is a uh, medium it's a steel bock nib I'm finding this very, very smooth. Now, the um, material is uh, an ebonite. And it is a red ripple. Now, the ink in here today, I decided to ink it up with Waterman. Uh, intense black. 
and that tends to go with some of the black on the pen but also the black nib as well now in terms of uh, line variation so this is a medium steel nib and I am finding it is a medium width if I apply pressure I can easily get a broad out of this nib look at that that is actually quite nice in terms of flex and again like i'm not seeing any hard starts or skips i did get one here but i think it was because i just left the pen uninked for a little bit whilst i was talking uh so let's do an ink wetness and we'll check that so this is a lovely wet nib it's not a fire hose nib but it is a lovely wet nib uh the pen writes really really well uh what do i like what do i not like about this pen well i'm not normally an ebonite pen guy uh, i normally like acrylics or celluloid or resins um but I do like the look of this. I like the sort of wood grain, sort of red ripple effect going on here. Uh, I like the size in the pen. I like the weight. I like this got a Bok nib. I'm more partial to Bok nibs than, than Yovo nibs. Although uh, in most of my custom pens, I do have Yovo broad nibs. Uh, I am more of a Bok nib um, per kind of person. So uh, I like that this has a Bok nib in. Uh, what do I not like about the pen? There really isn't anything. Um, like the only thing I could say is the section is a long section, and that may not be for everybody's taste. Uh, you can, as I mentioned, you can post this, although most of the chameleons you cannot. Um, so you might want to check that if you are going for another handmade chameleon to see whether or not that will post or not. Other than that, I like the pen a lot. Uh, it's I think Chris at Butterknife Creations is doing a lot of good work. And uh, I would like to see... I, I've seen a lot more pens on his Instagram as well. So I do like a lot of the pens that he's showcasing so far. So I'd like to thank Derek at Stonecop Fine Writing Supplies for learning me this pen for review. If you want to buy this particular pen, go and check Derek out at StonecopFineWritingSupplies.com. Uh, he uh, has a number of butter knife creations pens available in the UK if you want to buy them in the UK or uh, if you're in Canada or in the US then you can also go to Chris and even do a commission as well so uh, this is a, an interesting pen made of ebonite and I, I like it a lot so that's my review of the butter knife creations bumpy chameleon in an ebonite red ripple Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.